In this video, we will cover user management for Extranet Collaboration Manager 2013. To get to the Extranet user management menu, we go over to the wheel, site settings, and once that comes up, we can see the Extranet management submenu at the bottom of the screen. So let's click on Extranet users to bring up the management screen. And here we see a listing of all the current Extranet users for the site. If I actually go to the Users tab here, we see all the functions that we can perform from the user interface under this menu. The first thing that we're going to do is actually add a new user. So there are three ways you can add users with Extranet Collaboration Manager, or EXCM, 2013. Manually, via invitation, so you send an email to a user asking them to register for access to your site. And the last one is self or anonymous registration, where someone navigates to your site clicks on a button like sign up, fills out their information, and then submits it for approval. So let's create one manually here so we can see how that works. And let's say this is Jeff from the Atme Corporation. I'm going to give him a password, confirm that password. We have a re password recovery question and answer here. I'm just going to answer real quick to the mother's maiden name. Now, Jeff can actually go in and change this um, after he logs in for the first time. And the fields with the red asterisk are required. The other ones are not. So I'm just going to fill in company name here. And I'm going to flag this change password at next login area. So it will actually make Jeff change his password the first time he logs in. And for site access, I'm going to add him to just the site visitors group. And finally, I'm going to send him a welcome message via email. It'll tell him he's been added to the site. It'll give him his current username and password, and then ask him to go in there, uh, go ahead, log in, and change it to something that only he knows. So we'll save that. And as you can see now, Jeff's been added to the user list. Uh, this is the date that he was created. This column reflects the last login date, last activity, last lockout, which in this case is when they enter the username or password combination uh, incorrectly too many times. And you can specify that in the web config file. And this is the last time their password was changed. Let's go back over to the Users tab. Let's look at some of the other areas we can look at. So let's take a look at Jeff, the one we just created. We'll click on View User. It's going to have his username, email address. In this case, they're set to be the same thing. And then it has first name, last name, and company name, which is what we filled out when we created him. Let's take a look at an account that may not have any information. So if we click on Add for Ace.com, We can see that they only have a username basically. So we have username, email address, no information under their account profile. Let's say we want to add some to that account. Let's say something changes or we didn't know it at the time, but we want to go back in there and add their full name, maybe company name or phone number. So let's say this is Samantha Smith. She's with the Ace Company. And let's say she's in marketing. Save that. And once that comes back, we can click on the add for at ace.com again, go over to users, view them one more time. And now we can see that her first name, last name, job title, and company name have all been updated and changed. Now let's look at the next option, which is Delete User. This is actually the only screen that you can permanently delete a user from EXCM 2013. And it's restricted to people who are either farm administrators or site collection admins that have also been granted what we call extra account manager privileges through PowerShell. So let's say we want to delete the one we just created, Jeff at atme.com. I can highlight him, click Delete User, confirm it. 
And then once it comes back, we can see that Jeff's no longer a user on the site. In addition, I can change the user's password. Now, when a user registers for access, they generally pick a secret question and answer. Um, in some cases, however, if they forget that and someone else needs to change their password, we can do that if you're a Windows administrator without knowing their secret question and answer from the screen. So let's say that Jeremy forgot his secret question and answer, and now we have to have a Windows admin go in there and change his password. So I'm going to change it real quick. Save that. And once that comes back, we can see that Jeremy's password changed 118, 2013. And he's good to go and can now get back into the site. Let's look at the next group of functions, which is the access group. If we look over to the far right, we can see approved and unlocked. So so sometimes you might want to turn on approval in EXCM 2013, and generally we see that used for the cell for anonymous registrations. Uh, typically we don't see them with a manual creation or an invitation registration because the thinking is, is that if you invite someone to register for access to your site using their email address, that you have an existing business relationship with them. And so basically if they're invited, they're approved. In this case, the top user, add at acme.com, has not yet been approved yet. So we can actually set up a workflow approval for this, but for the purpose of the video, we're just going to manually approve them. So let's go ahead and click on Approve or Deny. Click OK. And now we can see that added at me.com has been approved. The other column is the unlocked column. So this happens when someone has tried the username or password combination too many times incorrectly. And in this case, Matthew has locked himself out of, out of the site. So I can highlight him, click on the unlocked user icon, click OK. And when it comes back, we can see that everybody's green, everybody's good to go, everybody can access the site successfully. Finally, let's go over to the Actions area. So we can actually invite new users from the screen as well. So let's send out an invitation real quick. And this is going to be Tammy at atme.com. I'm going to make her a member of the owners group. Click Save. And once it comes back, it means the invitation has been sent. And we'll look at the invitation here at the very end of the video. Let's cover the last couple of actions over here. Add users to role and view user roles. So extranet users and extranet roles are a little bit different in the fact that they span the entire web application and can be made available to any site collection contained therein. Um, you know, a typical SharePoint group is site collection specific. An extranet role is going to be available to all site collections within a particular web app. And then the same thing for the users. So from this screen, we can actually add extranet users to extranet roles, or we can view the roles that the user may already be a member of. In this case, I'm going to add Jeremy from mapme.com. I'm going to add him to a role. And we can add more than one user at a time to a role if we want, but for the video, we're just going to add Jeremy. And what I've done is created an extranet role called Acme Employees. So we're going to add him, click Save. Once that comes back, we can now highlight Jeremy, go back over to Users, click View User Roles, and we can now see that he's been added to the Acme Employees role. Okay, so that covers all the actions that are available under this menu. Before we end the video, I'd like to go and just show you the emails that were generated from what we just did. So the first one here is going to be the manual user creation that we did. It's going to be sent to Jeff, and it says, Jeff, you've, an account has been created for you on the Dev Home One site. It gives his username and password, and then asks him to please log on and change his password. The second one is going to be the invitation that we just sent. And it says, Tammy at me.com, you've been invited to register for access to the Dev Home One site. To complete the registration, simply click the link below. So clicking this link would take her to a registration page where she would fill out her information, click Submit, and then she would be added as a user. We're going to cover that in some future videos. But for right now, that ends the Extranet User Management video for EXCM 2013. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it was informative. Thanks for watching.